is Ian. I work at Breedlove, and we're going to talk about humidifying your guitar. Your guitar will, is going to want to live in a 40 to 50 percent humidity level. So if you if you live in an area where your guitars live in an area where it is below 40 percent humidity, you're going to want to invest in a humidifier. If you live in an area that's more humid and it's above 50, it's in the 60 range, you want to keep your guitars in an area where it's not going to be quite that humid. So you might want to invest in a dehumidifier for, the, for your guitar room if you have one. Um, I have a couple examples here of a, a dried out guitar and a guitar that's starting to get over humidified and showing signs of, of bloating. Uh, some of the things to look out for on a dried out guitar is the, immediately you'll notice that your strings seem like they're a lot lower than usual and you're having buzzing problems because the top of the guitar will sink and because the bridge and the saddle are connected to the top, the strings that come out of the bridge are going to be lower than normal and they're going to be sitting closer down to the frets and you'll have string, string buzz, fret buzz. Uh, you'll also notice that your frets are starting to poke out, feel like they're extra sharp along the edge of the fingerboard. Because when the fingerboard dries out, it shrinks, and the frets uh, are made of metal, so they're not going to move at all. They're not going to shrink. Um, you'll also notice cracks, um, and the guitar just doesn't quite sound like it should have a little, just doesn't quite have a, the, uh, the life that it used to have. Uh, some of the signs of an overhumidified guitar are going to be that your strings feel like they're higher than usual. Um, same basic principle of a dried out guitar when, when a guitar is overhumidified and it bloats everything raises. So the strings are going to come up, it's going to seem like guitars, the guitar is extra hard to play. Um, you'll also notice uh, the grain in the top especially. The grain pattern will start to pop, have kind of a rigid look to it. Also around the tail block you'll notice uh, a divot forming there because the, the top is glued down to a tail block right here and when the top bloats this area right here is not going to move at all. So it's going to swell up and this area down here is going to be sunk. It'll be the same on the back, right in this area on the tail block. And the back will also bloat as well. Um, another thing that you'll notice is ski jumping on the fingerboard extension. That's a little piece of the fingerboard that sits on the top of the guitar. We call it ski jumping um, or up check. It's when the neck is good and flat and when you look down the neck and you see that the extension right here is starting to go up like this, kind of like a ski jump. That's because the top is raised, the extension is glued to the top, so the extension is going to come up as well. Um, so I, I do have some examples here of uh, dried out and overhumidified guitar. And what you'll notice on an uh, overhumidified guitar that's starting to bloat is just that the top is starting to swell up. And you can see with this straight edge how much rock it has to it. This isn't the most extreme case that we've seen, but it is a pretty good example of when a top starts to swell up. See how it's kind of rocking like that? And on this guitar right here, this dried out example, you'll see the opposite. It's starting to sink, it's dried out, starting to cave in. You can see that there's, there's no arch to it at all. It's completely dried out, sunk in. The back's doing the same. And like I mentioned before, when dried out, you'll see a lot of cracks. This one has a lot of cracks in it. The center seam's completely opened up and it's cracking along the top right here. So basically the rule is, between 40 and 50 percent humidity. If you keep your guitar in that range, your guitar will be happy and you'll be happy. Thanks for watching.